Let's talk about the effector mechanism of TFH cells or helper uh, T cells that are called follicular helper T cells. So again, we're in the lymph node and we've got a naive T cell um, recognizing a peptide using its T cell receptor. And now that the T cell has differentiated into a TFH cell, what is the cell going to do to help the immune response? Well, it's going to help B cells activate. And when we learned in the previous unit about B cell activation, we talked about thymus dependent versus thymus independent activation. Here's the thymus dependent activation, requiring a signal from a helper T cell, specifically the TFH cell. So the cell is going to help activate B cells and trigger isotype switching, somatic hypermutation, and affinity maturation. So the key to know here is that we're staying in the lymph node. This T cell doesn't leave the lymph node and travel somewhere because it stays in the lymph node. That's where B cells are trying to activate. So the only place that this T cell moves from is one part of the lymph node into the other part. It moves from the T cell area to the B cell area. And we, don't, we haven't covered a lot about uh, lymph, uh, lymph tissue structure, um, and I wouldn't worry too much about it. But uh, what the T cells are going to do is they're going to help naive B cells activate. So we've got to review a little bit about naive B cells. All right, they have B cell receptors on their surface, and these receptors are going to uh, test their antigen binding sites against any uh, pathogens that might be drained into the lymph node. So let's say that there is a pathogen that um, has some molecule on its surface that binds the antigen binding site of the immunoglobulins present in the B cell receptor. So the naive B cells undergoing B cell receptor crosslinking. Uh, what's inter interesting to note here is that this antigen could be any molecule. It could be a protein on the surface of the pathogen. It could be a carbohydrate or a lipid on the surface of a pathogen. It could be a nucleic acid that uh, has been released from the pathogen. So the fact that you can make antibodies to really any molecule um, comes from the fact that the antigen binding site can really has a three-dimensional shape that can bind any molecule. But doesn't this B cell need to present peptides to T cells? And the answer is yes. We'll see that right now. So what happens here is the naive B cell binds some antigen, some molecule, and it takes that uh, antigen in via receptor-mediated endocytosis. So now the B cell receptor is used for endocytosis, right? So receptor-mediated. And now that the B cell has taken in this pathogen, it breaks it down. And when it breaks it down, um, the proteins present in that pathogen are broken down into peptides. And now we're presenting peptides on MHE class II molecules on the surface of the naive B cell. This would be the same peptide that activated the naive T cell. But this peptide doesn't have to be the protein recognized by the immunoglobulin. So the immunoglobulin could have recognized some sugar or some lipid on the surface of the pathogen. The pathogen is taken in, broken down by um, uh, proteases, and now we've got peptides loaded onto MHC2. These peptides are going to be presented to the T cell receptor, and the T cell receptor would bind these peptides. Say, so, yep, I know that's a foreign peptide. I know we need to. Uh, I need to help you. So the T follicular cell is going to have CD40L or CD40 ligand, a protein on its surface, that will bind the CD40 protein on the surface of a naive B cell. If that protein-protein interaction occurs and T cells release cytokines that bind the cytokine receptors on the surface of naive B cells, this is going to trigger uh, B cell activation. So the B cell will activate in a thymus-dependent manner and that will allow isotype switching to occur. And we covered in the B cell unit uh, about some uh, cytokines will direct the cell to switch to IgA, and other cytokines will direct their cell to switch to IgA uh, G or IgE. Um, in this case here, TFH cells are directing um, isotype switching to usually IgA or IgG. Um, TH2 cells 
release cytokines that direct to IgE isotype switching. So now that the cell has, uh, B cell has activated and proliferated and undergone isotype switching and affinity maturation, it will release antibodies. It will secrete antibodies. Isotype switched, so maybe they're IgA or IgG, and uh, they're underwent affinity maturation, so they're high affinity antibodies, and they will bind the pathogen and hopefully clear the pathogen uh, in an antibody dependent manner. Uh, or be involved in things like neutralization, opsonization, activating complement. Um, and so what's interesting to, again, point out is that you can make antibodies to proteins or carbohydrates or lipids or nucleic acids um, because those antibodies can bind uh, molecules uh, during B cell uh, activation and those molecules are internalized and you don't have to present the same exact molecule to T cells. You, all you have to do is present a peptide that originated from that pathogen, somewhere in that pathogen, to the T cell. And that allows uh, B cells to produce antibodies to a wide range of molecules.